All right, let's talk about the 49ers week two over week one. In business, often you will have week over week analysis. And with the 49ers, we only have two weeks to go off of, but we got to give week over week analysis. So we'll start with you and we'll start with the positive. Week over week, what looked better for the San Francisco 49ers week two compared to week one, in your opinion? Um, I'm going to go with, even though the numbers were the same, I guess, similar, mm-hmm. I want to go with the special teams. The special teams stepped up, I think, a little bit. I mean, the, uh, Moody had that one kick where he kicked it out of bounds on a, yeah. on a kickoff, which was obviously not ideal. But overall, the same issues that I was seeing in week one, I wasn't seeing in week two, right? So they were able to cover those kick returns. They were, you know, managing the the starting uh, field position for the Rams much better than they were against the Steelers. And obviously, Jake Moody, with especially with that 57-yarder, man, he was getting Jesse to actually apologize. I was like, yo, look at, look at Jake Moody finally getting that apology from Jesse <laughs> on Twitter. So You notice um, how I left myself an out, though. You saw that I ended <laughs> yeah. it with for now. For now. <laughs> I see that, you know. Jesse, you always trying to hedge, right? You know, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you make sure. you you, you're one of those, I make strong takes yeah. sometimes. You know what I mean? Like you're one of those type of type of strong take makers. So I know, you, you know, those takes <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> When I feel like it. Exactly. This is how I feel sometimes. But like, um, so like, uh, so yeah, so I, I want to give props. I think the special teams definitely look better week two than they did week one. I actually was going to go with special teams. So Oof. I'm going to have to change mine. But I, I do have a second one. And I agree with you, special teams, especially in the the return kick return game, uh, return defensive game. I would say they definitely showed out a lot better. Listen, at first glance, I thought it was this right here was way better than it was last week. I went back and watched things, and I don't feel as strongly about it, but it was still better regardless. The right side of the offensive line wasn't as big of a concern as it was in week one. Now, we can chalk that up and say, all right, well, maybe they weren't playing, you know, it's out of a defensive line. Maybe they're just getting more continuity. They looked better. And at least after the game, immediately after the game, last week, leaving the game, I'm like, oh, that right side of the line is awful. This week, I was like, eh, not so bad. There's improvement. So I'm going to go with that. I think the right side of the offensive line definitely did make improvements. And hopefully, just each week, they can build on that. I think. I think talent wise, they have the skill to be fine. It's just putting it together. You still got a young player in Burford. You've got a, a guy in McKivitz who hasn't played a ton, regardless. He, he's more of a spot duty guy. So I would hope as the season goes, we, we see this improvement. So not perfect by any means, but definitely better than week one, I, I would have to say. Yeah. I feel you. And I mean, look, I, I, I'm, I think I'm a lot higher on. McKivis than a lot of people. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think he's a Pro Bowl right tackle, but I do think he's going to be serviceable. And I think the Pittsburgh game, the reason why he looked bad was more TJ Watt than his ability. I think a lot of right tackles will look that way against TJ Watt. And, you know, it's not that they, he didn't play against people formidable. You know, Aaron Donald was lined up against him a few times and you know, Donald didn't have a crazy game by any stretch of the imagination. So you got to give for as much criticism as the right side of the, uh, of the line got last week. I think it's good that you brought brought them up and gave them a little bit of praise because I think they deserve it. And more impressively, uh, more importantly, not so much just the fact that, um, you know, there wasn't as many sacks and they were actually able to get a, a t- some touchdowns running to the right, which was, you know, we don't usually see all the time. They didn't have nearly the penalties that they had in week one, which obviously is a big deal, right? So cleaning up those penalties, I think they do deserve some praise. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Two Buck Chuck, Brother Bob says, yo, Gammon and Zach, stay out of my Two Buck Chuck lane. I think that's what we're (laughs) saying. Gammon says, how much for you two to shave your beards live? Not going to happen. You've seen me with a shaved beard. We don't want to do that again. (laughs) And then Two Buck Chuck says, yo, Gammon and Zach, stay out of my 
he's making sure that he's reminding you. He's really kind of being a bully is the way that I see this. I don't know how I feel about that, Brother Bob, but we'll we'll see how the show goes. All right. So we just gave where the 49ers improved week over week. Where did they look slightly worse or was there a downgrade in your opinion week two over week one in your week over week analysis? Uh, I'm going to let you go first because I think I'm, you know, I, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I mean, I naturally dim your shine, bro, because I just mm. have the better takes, but That's you true. know, you, That's, my boy, yeah. you, my boy, this is your channel. Let's, uh, let, let's give you some shine. Yeah, most definitely. I, I would say, and it wasn't bad by any means, but last week, the 49ers in particular, in the middle of that defensive line, absolutely dominated the game, right? We, I think the defense as a whole, you could say, all right, well, the defense. The defense just didn't look as good. But in particular, the interior of that defensive line last week was absolutely dominant. They were getting pressure on a regular basis. And I think there's reasons for that, but they just didn't play near as well as they did the week before. I think a lot of that came down to schematics. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But overall, just not the dominant performance from them that we saw the week before. And I think because there wasn't a lot of pressure and then the 49ers were playing soft coverage behind that, it, it just kind of came down to a, a day where the game was maybe a lot closer than what a lot of people predicted and a lot closer for a long time than what we were comfortable with for sure. Yeah. Uh, and mine's going to be on the defensive side as well. Um, yeah. I don't think that, the linebackers had as great of a game as they usually do. And specifically when it came to stopping the run, you know, in, in week one, they were able to hold uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers to under 50 yards rushing. That wasn't the case. Karen Williams was running all over them and the tackling, you know, usually the 49ers are extremely sound tacklers, Jesse. I don't know if you noticed, but especially in that first half, the, they were letting guys like Puka, guys like Kirian get, get, get you know, hit and get more yards after the hit, which is not something I'm used to seeing the defense allowing. Um, so th that, I think, whereas especially in the first half, was a big issue that they were able – they were allowing uh, the Rams to get their run off, which was a little bit disappointing because they did really struggle, Rams did, uh, with with running the ball against Seattle. So – um, something that 49ers do need to tighten up when it comes to, you know, moving forward because, you know, obviously the rush is something that a lot of teams focus on. And uh, that has been something that the 49ers we thought had fixed. But if they allow, if that's going to start slipping, definitely need to fix that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because I think there's two plays that kind of can summarize what you're talking about. Week one, you had Fred Warner meet Najee Harris at the point of contact and absolutely obliterate him. So much so that, in fact, I had a conversation with Larry and Vish the week leading up to the game, and I just said, you know, to me, the tone setters on this defense, as far as hard hitters, are Greenlaw and Hafunga. Not saying that Fred doesn't hit hard from time to time, but that's not his game. He's the coverage guy. So people were like, oh, yeah, what about this hit? Well... I could have easily responded because a play this week when Kyron Williams ended up getting a touchdown like a play later, he met Fred Warner at the point of contact in the hole and he drove Fred Warner backwards. And so it, it was just one of those things where the juice from the linebackers may not have been the same week over week. And part of that might be because Greenlaw got the penalty as well. Greenlaw's mm -hmm. always, he's always right on the edge of potentially getting the penalty. Mm -hmm. This week, unfortunately for him, he got it. Last week, he didn't. I love that about him, but you just never know when it's going to happen, and hopefully it doesn't screw you over, potentially, as far as winning a game. But that's just the way that these guys play. And so sometimes when you get that penalty, it can take that that yeah. nastiness out of your game or that edge off your game a little bit. Maybe that had something to do with it as well. Especially because that, that penalty was so soft. Like, it really yeah. didn't seem like that should I be the, the penalty knowing Drake Greenlaw's game. If he want, if he was going to get a penalty, he would, he would definitely get his money's worth. Um, yeah. But I think maybe that did get into the back of his mind. If they're going to call the game, 
so soft that he has to maybe ramp it down a little bit. But, you know, that's going to be – it's going to be important because even though Saquon isn't going to be there against the Giants, Jesse, they're still going to run the ball a lot because they don't throw the ball well. So they still have to be able to make sure that they stop the run, whether it be – mostly it's probably going to be Daniel Jones, but um, whomever is in that backfield uh, – they're going to get the ball a lot and you know, the 49ers need to make sure that they're meeting these ru rushers on their side of the ball versus, you know, the 49ers side of the, the line. 